In this video, uh, we're going to do a practice problem for binomial distributions. Um, so, you work for a company that makes light bulbs. When shipping them, there is a 10% chance that a light bulb will break. They're light bulbs, they break. Okay, so if you are shipping a case of 50 bulbs, how many do you expect to break? Now, this word expect, we're going to have a formal definition for that later in a, in a later section. So for right now, I just want you to kind of use logic. If 10% break, if there's a 10% chance that a light bulb is going to break, and you're shipping 50 of them, how many do you expect to show up broken when, when the package gets delivered? Well, hopefully you looked at that and said, well, I would expect 50, right? Out of my 50 bulbs, I would expect 10% of them to break, so therefore me, that means I expect 5 bulbs to break, right? Okay, um, totally, that's it. That's all I wanted out of you. So if, you, if you're a little nervous about that, that, that's all you needed. Okay, so now, my question for you is, what is the actual probability that when that box gets shipped, that I, exactly five of them will actually be broken? Um, is it 100%? Well, no, that, that one makes sense because some, maybe sometimes, you know, that you get lucky and only four break or three break, um, or you get really unlucky and they drop it and, and more than that break. Um, so how would you calculate the probability that exactly five bulbs broke? Uh, well, that's, could you do a binomial? Can you define it as success and fail? And can you define it as repeated trials? And can you de, um, say that the probability does not change once one bulb breaks if another one is more or less likely to break? And from the knowledge we have, we can say yes to all three of those. Um, and so instead of looking at it as a case of 50, I'll look at it as individual bulbs, one bulb, one bulb, one bulb, and so on. Uh, and I will say I have no knowledge to say that when one bulb breaks, that makes anything more or less likely for another one. So we'll go with that. So here we go. What would our, what would our distribution look like? Well, it's the probability of x equaling 5. And that will equal to what? 50 is my... my um, my number of trials, and out of those, I want five to break. Well, I don't really want five to break, but that's the question. The likelihood of breaking, we said, is 10%, so that's 0 0.1, and five of those should break, which therefore means there's a 90% chance they won't break, and I would need 45 of those. Um, and if you haven't noticed yet, these numbers always have to add up to make your total number of trials, right? Because if I want five successes, then I need 45 failures to make a total of 50. So, what does that number come out to be? All right, let's do that in the calculator really fast um, and figure out what we're looking at here. I'm totally going to cheat and grab this. All right, so here we go. Um, so we need a total of 50 bulbs with a probability of 0.1. And the question is asking about five once again. Okay. And when we do this, okay, so what we see here, what we see here is actually really interesting. 18 point, well, here, there is an 18.49% chance that exactly five bulbs will break. That's kind of weird because if we expect five to break, we'd expect that to happen most often, right? And it's only going to happen 18% of the time, 18.4 or 9, 18.5-ish percent of the time. So now what I'm going to point out is we can also do the same thing here in the Y1 line. So let's let's do this. This will be fun. So let's let's type in this exact. We could. I'm going to do the 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 standard by hand formula. I think that'll be a little easier to understand what's going on. So I'm going to do 50 math, uh, go over to the probability, I want combinations, that's option 3, so 50 choose. Now, um, what, instead of doing 5 though, I'm going to put an x. I'm going to say I want it to be, I'm going to let that, va that value change, the number of them that I want. Probability of success will be 0.1, raised to the x, probability of failure is still 0.9, That'll be raised to the, now, I don't know what my number is going to be because my number of successes is changing, so I'm going to do 50 trials minus x. And so now, get, get that typed into your calculator, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the table. But in this case, um, I want, I don't want my, my table to be in ask mode, I want it to be in kind of count, well, it's okay, we can be in ask mode. So I'm going to go to table sets, I'm going to press second, window. And I'm going to change my calculator to be in ask mode. Um, so that way, when I go second, 
table, I get a blank screen. Or if you have numbers in there, you can just hit delete repeatedly until they go away. So now, let's see. If I were to type in zero, then that would be mean the probability of exactly zero breaking. And then one, then two, then three, and so on and so forth. And what we should see, hopefully, at five is that number we just came up with. Yay, it is. And then six, and I'm going to keep going here. Seven, eight, nine. All right, that's probably, I can do one more because I have one more space. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is drop this in the notes so it's a little bit bigger. Voila. So what do we see? What do we see here? Which of these outcomes is the most likely? Well, we said we expected 5 to break, and look at that probability, 0.184. Do you notice that's the highest probability in the list? So it absolutely makes sense. Uh, our logic of the expected amount is the same as what the probabilities show. But when you look at this, what do you see? Do you notice anything interesting? Do you notice that basically four or five bulbs, it's basically the same probability? And then six bulbs ain't that far off? And then maybe three bulbs is pretty close to that? And so on and so forth. So if I were to ask you, now I, I, you could use these numbers to answer, like, what's the likelihood of there being four or more broken bulbs? Well, if I asked for four or more broken bulbs, then you'd say, OK, well, it's this probability and that probability, that probability, that probability, that probability, that probability, that probability, that probability and just keep going. And tell these probabilities essentially reach zero and you'll know what your probability was and if you really care you can go all the way up to 50 um, or remember you could always do the one minus and then do the other probabilities so if I said what's the probability of x being greater than or equal to 4 you would do one minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 3 right um, so then you would take the probability of 3 2 1 and 0 and then take those values and subtract one from them. Okay, so here, what range of broken bulbs would you consider to be normal? Now, we'll come up with measures for this later. We're going to talk, learn about a thing called standard deviations, and we're going to say what would be considered normal, what would be considered abnormal. But for now, let's just eyeball it. Let's just say, where would you, what would you consider to be normal? Well, to have zero bulbs broken, do you see that happens less than 1% of the time? That's not kind of, that's kind of not normal, right? So what would you think? And, and this is just purely opinion at this point. So I don't know. I would say maybe me personally, maybe the, you know, 5%, 10%, all of these seem to be kind of the highest values. So I would say maybe anywhere between 2 to 8 bulbs uh, will be broken out of your case of 50 normally and we'll have a way of actually computing that later but for now let's say two to eight bulbs and if you don't agree but whatever you think it's just a it's just a gut but the idea I want you to look at here is and say you know if five is the most common you know 18.09 is not that far off so if you're don't tell me five you better tell me four too at least four and five and then you know, th you know six isn't really that far off either 15 percent of the time that's going to happen so Anyway, play that game. All right, so I hope Bernoulli trials, binomial distributions, I think, I hope you feel comfortable. And make sure you have this technique down so you can build a table of values real fast. Make sure you have the calculator down so you can get the numbers out really fast, but also know the, the by hand formula. It's going to be important. All right, we'll see you in the next video.